So in this video, we've got a subwoofer, we've got a mixer. The story's all gonna be about this one feature right here, which is called level. Now it has a plus 10 and a minus four. This is gonna be very important because we're gonna talk about how this works, where we see this and what this is all about and how this is gonna interact with our input. Very, very important. That's what today's video is all about. So first let's talk about what this actual switch does because that's what it's really here for. It's to adjust the actual power levels, the voltage going in and how it's going to monitor, read that information as it comes in through the XLR cable. Now there's a consumer and a commercial setup here. Now the funny thing is, is the plus four and the minus 10 actually really decides to mix things up a bit for us. So what's happening is the actual plus four represents the DBU. So take away the plus four, just say down switch is DBU and the up switch is DBV. So when we look at the plus four, there's actually a little bit more written after that when you read a manual. It's going to say plus four DBU, and that plus four, if you look it up, you're gonna find out that it's referencing the voltage, or VRMS. Now, what is, what's the actual reading? Well, it's 0.775 volts, but that's not exactly what's going into here. This is being adjusted because it says plus four, so it's adding four DBU to the whole thing, bringing it up to, yes, 1.23 volts RMS. Now, you knew that, of course, right? That's what it's all about. Now, if we switch it up, now we're into the minus 10. Now, this is actually DBV. Just so a little trivia information, if you really want to get in the conversation with somebody, they used to both be DBV. This one was DBV with a small V, and this one was DBV with a capital V. They decided to change it to U because it was just too confusing. So now, DBV, what are we looking at? That's our consumer input line. Now again, it has minus 10, but let's just get rid of the 10 and say, well, what is it at zero? At zero, it is one volt RMS. Yes, technically speaking, this is more than this when it's measured at zero. The difference is it has a minus 10 in front of it. So that means one VRMS minus 10 DBV equals 0.316. So it is less, dramatically less than what we have down here by a factor of basically almost a quarter. So this is four times more powerful than this is when it comes to voltage. Very nice, very impressive. Now that means nothing unless you actually know how to use it. Now, pretty much all your commercial equipment that has an XLR plug is pretty simple. We're gonna consider that to be your commercial input. That's gonna be set at plus four. Why do we wanna set that at plus four? We want this system to run at a higher voltage level to match the input. Now, if we accidentally put it here, we're not gonna destroy anything, but what you're gonna see is without even adding any volume, if you just run 80 Hertz into it, the clip light's gonna go off pretty much right away when you hit Unity, without any actual volume applied to the subwoofer. That's how much of a power difference that is. Now, if we leave it here, we're gonna get a lot more control, a lot more gain, a lot more volume out of it, and it solves a lot of problems for a lot of people. So how do we know if we're getting it right or wrong? Well, we're gonna do that right now. First, we gotta turn on the equipment. So up here, we've got ourselves our mixer. We're gonna turn our mixer on first. We're gonna come down and then turn on the subwoofer. Remember, you always wanna turn on from the source down to the speakers. That's gonna guarantee that you're not getting any popping or loudness sounds to it. Now, I have a phone set up right next to it and I have 80 hertz test tone on it. So it's clear, it's clean, it's solid. Now, if you can't hear this on your phone because I can't and I have a Samsung phone, my phone won't operate at 80 hertz. Doesn't mean it's not broadcasting, it's sending it through here on Bluetooth. This guy can run at 80 hertz, no problem. So we're gonna turn this on. We're gonna see if the Bluetooth is connected. So here, if we have our gain levels all set up, just right. We're gonna level everything off here just to make sure that it's right on the money. Bingo, and it is right there. So my recording's just a little hot, so we're gonna turn that down just a little bit. There you go. So now, what you see is at Unity here, when I'm at Unity here, everything is set at Unity, and my input is at Unity, so everything matches up. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna reach Unity here. Now this is an actual 80 hertz tone. So it has no problems maintaining this. So normally this is dynamic, so it's going up and down with the music. But here we're playing a solid tune. We're playing a solid note 
right at 80 hertz. So it's going to stay and hold at zero. Now, if we come back down and look at what's going on with the subwoofer, we give it just a little bit of volume. And we're going to notice that our clip light is off. Everything's off. We're literally at 5% on the sub. We're set our crossover at 90 hertz. So this is where we're capturing everything. We can even drop that down to 80 right there. Now, important is as soon as I flick the switch, look at that. Look what happened there. Right away, the clip light's out. I'm still literally at 5% power. 5% power, flick the switch. I'm clipping on the sub already. It's not that I'm actually stressing the subwoofer out. I'm freaking the amp out with way too much voltage going into it and it's not going to be happy at all. So if you have a piece of equipment that's clipping really quickly, look and see if you've got a switch like this on it. And by pushing that down to plus four, this is going to fix your problem right here. Also make sure that your equipment is happy at unity. You're not pushing anything in that's way exceeding zero on your actual mixer or controller, because that as well is going to cause a problem down here. That's how you get the most out of your actual subwoofer. Now again, I can hear it here, and when I record it, I'll be able to hear it on my subwoofer on my actual editing suite. And of course, if you listen to it in your car, you're going to hear it. And if you listen to it on some high-end headphones that can produce 80 hertz, you're going to hear it. But if you listen to this on your phone or on your TV, you're probably not going to hear it unless you have a subwoofer nearby. But again, the lights are your tall tale. The switch, remember, I know it's quite the story, eh? We've got a lot of writing on the screen. The plus four references DBU, which used to be known as DBV with a small v, but they changed that. The minus 10 refers to DBV with a big V. And again, the voltages are adjusted because we've added four and we've minus 10. So where this was at one volt and this down here was at 0.775, because we added four, we brought that all the way up to 1.23. And because we minus 10, we went all the way down to 0.316. That is how all this happens. So there you go. In today's video, it's all about the level. It's all about adjusting that. And it's all about what this one little switch does for you. Now, remember, if you're adjusting this, it's all about if you're reading as an input or an output. In this case, on the subwoofer, it's an input. If I had an older mixer or a big console, I may have that switch. Or if I have some commercial equipment, I may have that switch as well. Just remember, is that switch referring to the output or the input? Am I making the signal 1.4 or minus 10? Or are we using it in this case here, which is on a receiving end of it, which is I'm adjusting the amp plate to receive a plus 4 signal or to receive a minus 10 signal. Very important. Well, there you go. I hope this video helped you out. I know this is pretty much a geeky little video on exactly what this does. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.